Incoming email. What you want to know? Craig's Corner. <laughs> hey, welcome to Craig's Corner for Wednesday, October 10th, 2012. Today's question comes all the way from Russia, from Oleg, and he wants to know how tone works, or just a little bit more about how tone works. Uh, he obviously knows that pushing it makes things sound better, but wanted to know a bit more about the guts. So there are four components to tone. Uh, we've got EQ, compression, de-essing, and gating. So I'll go over those in order there. The EQ, uh, essentially we have several EQ curves that we've put into the boxes. Uh, for something like a mic mechanic, it tries to match one curve. In something like a Play or a GTX, you can select multiple tone styles. And in something like a Voice Live 2, you can actually turn things on or off and uh, set the amounts and, and actually do a manual EQ if you want to. So there's sort of a range there of controllability. But essentially what happens is, we look at the incoming vocal signal and we say, how does this incoming signal compare to this EQ curve that we've got that we've determined sounds really great for vocals? Just the right amount of breathiness and not too muddy and no, not too much low end rumble and all that kind of stuff. And then we essentially take a snapshot very often of what's going on with the incoming signal and try and match it very quickly to the outgoing EQ. So that really helps your voice to have that, that, that really sort of nice tone to it that isn't too heavy in one way or the other. Then we have compression, so the way we use compression is we also very quickly take a look at the incoming signal levels and then the overall levels and we try and say, how can we keep this within a range that's reasonable? So um, for a singer who, who potentially has a large dynamic range, they sing really, really quiet and then really, really loud, the compressor will kind of take a look at those two signals and say, you know, we should probably shave some off the top here and we should probably boost some on the bottom there so you get a bit more of an even level and that rides constantly as well. So you're, you're always adapting that compression to what's going on. Similar thing goes for de-essing. De-essing is almost like a combination of the EQ and compression. Uh, it's sort of like sniping very specific frequency ranges to get rid of the S sound. So we're looking for spikes that we determine are an S, a sibilant sound, and then we try and, and knock those out as, uh, as the EQ curve gets adapted over time. And then finally, we've got the gating. Uh, the gating is typically meant for things like open mic feedback, where it uh, it will just kick in after it's detected that there's no uh, input for you know a small amount of time. It'll say, okay, I think this is an open mic. Let's just reduce the gain by three dB or six dB, just enough so that if the mic's sitting there on stage, it doesn't actually feed back on you. Um, like I said, in something like a Voice Live 2, you can actually go in and adjust all those settings. In something like a mic mechanic, it's on and off, and right in the, in the middle there, in things like uh, uh, like the Voice I Play and GTX, you can choose from certain styles that better fit your voice. Um, we've done most of the, the uh, shaping of tone with the idea that most people will just turn it on and leave it and it sounds great. Uh, there are very rare circumstances where it can cause some feedback. If you've got a very bright room and then we're trying to add a little bit more high-end EQ, uh, you, can, you can run into those issues. So I, as a last resort in, uh, in, related to my, in relation to my feedback video, my last resort uh, for feedback would be to turn off tone, but generally we just, <laughs> to quote infomercials, set it and forget it and we move on from there so hopefully that uh, clarifies things for you Oleg gives you a little insight into how it works and how often we're taking a, a little snapshot of your voice to try and make it sound its best